Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and after mixing over 500 tracks in the past year, I've noticed one common mistake that keeps occurring more than anything else, and it has to do with the sub bass. So I wanted to address the problems that people are having with their sub bass in this video, and how you can simplify things to have your sub bass fit well in the mix every single time. So I've got a simple bass line in front of me to use as an example. So the number one thing you should be doing to address any problems with your sub bass is create a separate track just for the sub bass. So what you're going to want to do is create a new track. I'm going to create it down here. I'm going to send it to my bass bus because that's being side chained to the kick. And in Serum, I'll make the sub bass in a second. So I'm going to move the MIDI down from the other bass. The first thing we're going to want to do is pull up an EQ to make sure the sub bass is sitting in the right frequency range in the mix. So I'm going to pull up Fab Filters Pro Q3, just because it's a nice visual EQ. Now I'm going to make two marks, one around 40 hertz and one around 90 hertz. So we really want the sub bass to sit in that frequency range between 40 and 90 hertz, somewhere in there. It can go a little off if you want it to, but that's where it's going to sound best on club systems, that's where it's going to sound best on car speakers. So you really want it to sit in that range. So I have this initial patch and serum here. Let's get it to sit in that frequency range. So you'll notice it's coming a fair amount above the 90 hertz range, which is fine. We could have the track like that, but it will probably sound better if we change the key of the song to fit in that frequency range. So let's go into the MIDI here and change the key of the song and see if we can get it to fit in the right place in this frequency range. So let's move it down a couple semitones. So you can see that fits in that frequency range much better. So let's test that out on our original bass up here. Let's move both these layers down like four semitones. Being in this new frequency range as opposed to four semitones up, for a much more even sub bass signal to come through the subwoofer. So let's go back to our sub patch over here. So the biggest thing is you want every single note that the sub is playing, whether it's low or high, to be the same exact volume so it's really easy to mix in with your track. If you have a huge discrepancy in volume with your sub bass, it's going to be really hard to mix it in because some notes will stand out a lot and be way too powerful and some notes will be way too quiet where you won't be able to feel them in the bass. So how we get that even sound is to add a ton of compression. So on Serum Effects, I'm just gonna add some multiband compression, which makes it sound really terrible right now, but I'm gonna put a filter on afterwards. And for now, keep the filter up so you can hear it better and we're gonna match the length of the notes that we want from this original bass. So the goal is to put this sub bass underneath that bass. So envelope one is our volume envelope right here. So once you've matched the envelope of your higher bass layer, then you can bring the cutoff back down. Now what we can do is go back to our original bass right here, add an EQ on there. So we're going to use a high pass filter just to take away those sub frequencies. And now we have this new sub right here, which I'll label. And then we can just mix it in individually with that sound. The best
best part about having the sub bass separate from the main bass is that we can change around the main bass as much as we want. We can change the sound, we can change the envelope, we can change anything about it without affecting the mix of the low end. So that sub bass stays the same and sits in the mix well even if we change that top layer. So if I wanted to turn this layer off and add a different bass layer, mess around with the sound as much as you want like this. And the sub bass stays sitting the right way in the mix. So it's really simple, just make sure your sub bass sits in the correct range in the frequency spectrum, move around the mini notes as much as you need to to do that, and also make sure the sub bass is separate from your main bass so you can compress the hell out of it so all the notes will be even and you can mix it in by itself. So hopefully this video was helpful to some of you guys. I've got a new single coming out this coming Friday, so be on the lookout for that. I'll definitely do a video on it when it's released. But other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.